This is for ECET 105 with DeVry University Online. This is the fall semester 2015 in the second eight-week session. We're working on week six lab. This is the second part of that lab where we took the previous circuit that was developed on the breadboard. We designed it in a schematic in Quartus 2 and then programmed our development board hoping to see the same results as what we had in our breadboard. The way that this is currently set up, we have switch set number two on the left hand side is using the far first force dip switches and the same with switch one. The only difference to this is going to be that switch 15, the farthest switch to the left, is going to be our selector switch choosing which group of switches that we are looking at. We can see that we have the same values set up on the switches as we had in the previous circuit. The switch set to the left is set for a binary value of 0101, which should be a decimal value of 5. And then switch 1 has a binary value of 1001, which should be a decimal value of 9. We're hoping to see the same kind of display show up as what we had had previously. And we're taking advantage of one of the, the elements that the ESOC3 board had that we were not able to do with the breadboarding. Um, we were relying on the position of a switch to tell us which one of the dip switch sets we were looking at. With this schematic set and with what we were able to do with the ESOC3, we've made it so that the second digit on the left hand side at the top, labeled digit 1, which is a little difficult to see from the shadow underneath the digits. But if you're looking at the same board, it is digit 1. Digit 1 is telling us which switch set we are looking at. So if we look at our corresponding switch numbers down at the bottom, switch 1, and we see that the 1 is displayed on the left at the top, that's telling us that we're looking at switch 1. And we can match the value on the right, which is the number 9, to the value that is set on the switch. So whenever we switch the inputs so that we're looking at switch number two we'll see that it, the value changed at the top both digits changed the digit to the left changed to show us that we are now looking at switch two and the digit on the right changed to show us the value of that digit we see a correct value of five is displayed and that we are looking at switch two so we're going to change the value on switch two to show that this is actually decoding a number and it's not just hard coded into the schematic. We're going to remove the value for the 4 bit, which gives us a 1, displayed correctly. We're going to add back in 2 bits, which should give us 3. That has displayed correctly. We're going to change the values on the other switches before we change the selector to show that there's no interference, that this does not affect this at all. So we're going to turn off the 8-bit value, we're going to turn on the 4-bit, and then we'll turn off the 1 and turn on the 2. We see that nothing has changed on the display itself. Everything has stayed the same. Whenever we change our selector switch, though, we should now have a value of 6 on the display. And we see that things have changed exactly as we expected. The left digit changed to 1 to show us that we're looking at switch 1. And the value on the right shows now the number 6, which is the value we were expecting as part of the input. 